pepper paprika in it. Etc. Welcome to Movie Madness with yours truly, JBG. Today I'm talking about Split. Written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. You might remember his film The Sixth Sense back from God knows when, but it got a Best Picture nomination, and he's back in form. Prime form. Happy to see it. Here we go. It stars James McAvoy in the role of his career so far. Oh my god. He rocks out so hard in this movie. Damn it! Anya Taylor-Joy from The Witch. You might remember The Witch. I didn't like The Witch, but she was the best part about it, so thank God they got her for this. And Broadway treasure Betty Buckley, who you might remember from The Happening, and Night Shyamalan's best comedy, I think. Mark Wahlberg's best work. What? No. She was the crazy old lady. Ha. Huh. Good times. Anyways, this movie has James McAvoy as a dude with 23 separate personalities. Um, and he basically kidnaps these three girls, Anya Taylor-Joy and these two other kind of annoying rich girls. Um, and they're kind of stuck in an uh, undisclosed location. Um, and... You don't really know what he wants to do with them, but he keeps talking about this beast who's going to appear, who's apparently, like, the 24th personality that he's been, like, kind of keeping down in the depths and, like, the dungeons of his soul for a long time. Um, but it's coming. It's going to be unleashed, and who knows what's going to happen. Uh, Betty Buckley is Dr. Fletcher, who is his therapist, who talks to all of his personalities. She's got all these files and folders about all his specific personalities, so she's able to, like call out usually which personality she's talking to even when one personality is trying to uh portray another personality and like fake their way through that uh session she can call it out she's smart um so this guy ain't a normal dude he has very special abilities He's capable of certain things that most people aren't. It's like his body chemistry that he can change, etc. Huh. Um, but he's a very interesting character, this Kevin. This Kevin Crumb. Um, but really, James McAvoy, man, he... This is... Uh, it is like Oscar-worthy work, which I know he's never going to get nominated in a thousand years for this. It should be like, it's like a Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds situation. Like, he should get nominated because it's phenomenal work, but he won't because it's a ridiculous type movie. Um, because he's like in a, in a horror movie. It's not really a horror movie. It's more of a uh, psychological thriller, but I would call it more even of a dark drama, especially how they portray the protagonist and the antagonist stories. They use her and these like flashbacks of her past as a child who her dad and her uncle were like hunters. They brought her hunting when she was like, really, really young, and it was, that can screw you up a little bit, especially when the uncle is the way he is, really disappointing and awful and terrible in every way, um, but how they, how they, you know, the parallels between his character and her character are drawn out really well in the movie, and that makes it really just effective, especially towards the end, um, uh, some people might find her flashbacks distracting and unnecessary, but I think how it sets up the two characters' confrontation uh, really pays off. So go M. Night for writing something that was very much a slow burn, but like kept me interested the whole way through. So keep doing this kind of work. Um, this is his second collaboration with Jason Blum of Blumhouse Productions, um, who's you know, known for producing more of the uh, mainstream horror movies nowadays. Um, the Visit was his last effort, which I liked. Some people didn't, but I actually liked it. And I was like, oh, M. Night, you're, you're onto something here. And he's picking it up now. He's picking up the pace. Um, he just needed a little help, taking, you know, bits and pieces from other, like, ins inspiration from other realms and, like, juggling, juggling with that, and he's making it work for now, um, and the cinematography in this is beautiful, uh, you might recognize it because it's, uh, Mike Jalakis, 
gelatinous gelacus. I'm going to call him Mike Gelatinous Gelacus because I don't know actually how to say his last name. But he was the cinematographer for It Follows, and that movie looked amazing, and that's why this movie looks amazing. Same dude. Extraordinary work. Just the shots, these hallway shots especially, and this one dance scene with James McAvoy. Ugh! Beautiful. Like, it, like, it was so simple. It, like, even it was like he was straight in the middle of the shot, but like, I don't know, wait, the way of the lighting, and like how you could like really feel the energy of the room he was in. Like the feng shui, if you will. Ugh, just, it was just really well shot. Uh, really well acted for the most part with those main three parts, yes. Everyone else kind of, eh, just the two other girls, I was like, there's a lot of like this and a lot of ha da 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 ha da da ha da da which is fine. Like, M. Night usually has good lead actors and then that supporting cast kind of just does their own thing. Um, but they were fine. They, 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 they served their purpose. So, so yeah, it was fine. Luckily, you know, they had James McAvoy in this because the writing was good, but like there were a lot of cliche moments, uh, a lot of things that could have derailed the film if it wasn't for his performance and his energy on the screen. So he kind of saved it when the movie started to falter. He came back in and was like, no, wait, I got this. And he got it. And I was just like so happy to see that. Um, and with the twist of this movie, I don't want to spoil anything, it's really hard to talk about it, but it is really setting up a brighter future for a lot of M. Night's fans. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say. Whoop, whoop. That's right. Um, so I'm excited to see what comes next, as I'm sure a lot of other people are as well. Um, since there's a kind of a semi-twist, and then there's like the real twist, which I consider was like the final scene where someone shows up oh um but yeah uh you'll really enjoy this movie more if you are a true hardcore m night Shyamalan fan otherwise for me personally i was not as informed as i would have liked to have been going into this movie about things but yeah it was still effective because i knew what it was going for. So I was like, oh right, I'm excited now. What's going on next? It's gonna be baller. So with that, I'm gonna give this movie, whoo, this is tough, whoo, this is tough. I'm gonna go ahead and say 105 out of 120 Kanye West albums. Thank you for joining me. This has been Movie Madness with Jubby G. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ta.